Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Masu. Thanks for tuning in to the Fred TV Sports Report. Well, this week, right behind me in the Luke Urban Fieldhouse, you could hear the sound of bouncing basketballs and whistles coming from the Skip Carum Court. Now, you may be saying to yourself, but Evan, basketball is a winter sport. Well, for this one week, it's also a summer sport, as local youngsters got to pick and roll through every facet of the game. Let's head inside and take a look at the 5th Annual Hilltopper Basketball Camp. It's become a summer staple here in Fall River. The Hilltopper Basketball Camp is led by a slew of Durfee coaches, along with current and former players. Lady Hilltoppers coach Brendan Kelly feels a sense of pride, knowing his former players look forward to returning and working with him each year. Every single coach at the camp has a direct relationship to Durfee basketball, whether it's as a former player, one of my former players, uh, you know, a couple of them are teachers in the school system. But that, to me, that means the most. When Chelsea Campbell is back for her fifth year, Shaylen Carrero, uh, a camper now coach, and Jordan Garvin coming back from Rhode Island College, Reagan McDonald, that means the most to me because that means they had a good experience, they had a good experience at camp, and they want to give back. So for me, that's the most important aspect of it. 11-year-old Julia Hargraves is back for another go-around at the camp. She told me that basketball is a family tradition going back to when her dad played for Durfee. My brother started doing this camp before I did and my father also played basketball at Durfee. And a lot of my cousins, like, they play on the girls' older team. And so I decided to try it out and, like, it was really fun for me. There's a lot of fun things we do here. We do, like, there's always a competition every day. We have like special days where today was your jersey day. You got to wear your favorite jersey of your favorite sports team. Players with a passion for the game, like Julia, give coaches a smile from ear to ear because they know the future is bright. It's definitely a feeder program. Uh, you know, they're getting their feet wet. They're getting used to having Coach Guimon and I around, uh, some of the former players around, the current players around. So, uh, you know, ultimately, they hopefully they want to be like them. Uh, you know, as they move forward. For a long, long time, Fall River had, uh, you know, some of the best youth basketball leagues in the state of Massachusetts. Um, and it's essential, you know, to have kids playing in a system and learning the fundamentals from a young age. Brendan was a camper in our first camp five years ago, um, and he'll be a senior at Durfee this year. And, you know, we left off after last season having a great game in the state tournament against Brockton. And Jameson, of course, is referring to Brendan White, who scored 17 points in that playoff loss and averaged 12 points per game in the six games we covered on Fred TV last winter. Brendan is no stranger to the camera. I spoke with him after his freshman year at the 2015 Highland Park 3-on-3 tournament. Two years later, Brendan can't believe he's already a high school senior. It's actually crazy how much time has flown, and it's actually kind of like emotional, like it sucks, but I mean, I've had a great four years here at Derby. Can't complain. It's been like been the best four years of my life. Basketball has been the only sport I cared about ever since I was a kid, and being part of the Derby tradition here, I mean, from the 80s to all the, all the way back to when it first began, I mean, that, Derby is basketball in my opinion. With players like Brendan and the rest of the team setting the example, this camp continues to grow in popularity, with this year's attendance being the highest of the previous four years. The growth of the camp is, is due to a lot of our staff that come back year in and year out and uh, really give back to the community. We have a great staff that works with us. Um, the kids enjoy it. Um, they learn fundamentals, um, they're getting fit, and they're having fun. So every year, you know, Brendan and I have had uh, our numbers increase, which is a good thing. This is our fifth year, and by far it's the biggest camp we've had. So it's a very positive thing for the community. Great stuff, as always, from the coaching staff. Now, if you missed the camp this year, be sure to sign up next spring for the 2018 camp. All right, we're going to head down to Chew Park now as we continue our American Legion coverage. Post 464 welcomed Freetown Post 425 to the park this Wednesday evening, and they had their hands full. Freetown is 3-0-1 in their last four games, and their offense is averaging nine runs a game this season. They got off to a hot start in the first. Patrick Otter at the plate with runners at the corners. He goes oppo, driving it to the gap in left center. Dylan Sulo from third. Elvis Choate all the way around from first. Two nothing Freetown. They led three zip after one. We'll go to the third now. Both teams flashing some leather. Gotta love great defense. Elvis Choate at the dish. Puts a charge into it, but look at the jump from Matt Saunders in center. Got a great read on the ball and lost the cap in the process. 
And we'll go to the bottom of the third. Freetown's Josh McCumber says, I'll do you one better. Snares a hot shot off the bat of Colin Medeiros to rob him. Great plays from both defenses. We'll jump to the fourth now. Fall River with a good opportunity to break the goose egg. Bases juiced, nobody out. Brett Fonseca grounds it to third. This time, McCumber can't make the out. He throws it away. Dan Shea scores from third. Kyle LePage thrown out trying to score from second. Before the final out of the game was recorded, these two teams combined for 20 runs of offense. Fall River gets the short end of the bat, though. They drop this one 13 to 7. But more importantly, as we look at the updated standings, they drop a position as well. As Freetown moves up into second place with just about two weeks left in the regular season. Now, starting Monday, Fall River will have a week that could make or break their season. They'll play five games in six days, the only day off being 4th of July. So a heavy schedule for the Fall River boys over the next week or so. That's going to do it for this week. We'll see you in two weeks on Friday, July 14th, same time, same place. For now, Evan Massoud coming to you from Durfee High School. Hope you have a great 4th of July.